In case you missed it, we have breaking news from Buckingham Palace. The Duke of Edinburgh has died. His Royal Highness passed away peacefully this morning. Flags are flying at half mast. So we mourn today with Her Majesty the Queen. His Royal Highness, Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh, Earl of Marion Neff. Baron Greenwich, Royal Knight of the Most Noble Order of the Garter, Extra Knight of the Most Ancient and Most Noble Order of the Thistle, Member of the Order of Merit, Knight Guard Cross of the Royal Victorian Order, Grand Master and First and Principal Knight Grand Cross of the Most Excellent Order of the British Empire, Knight of the Order of Australia, Additional Member of the Order of New Zealand, Extra Companion of the Queen's Service Order, Royal Chief of the Order of Lagahu, Extraordinary Companion of the Order of Canada, Extraordinary Commander of the Order of Military Merit, Lord of Her Majesty's Most Honorable Privy Council, Privy Counselor of the Queen's Privy Council for Canada, Personal Aide de Camp to Her Majesty, Lord High High Admiral of the United Kingdom has died. Whatever you think of the modern royals, and whoo, <laughs> it's a wild time for that discourse, huh? Their death plans are a lot. They are extra. They are doing the most, as the children say. As a senior royal, the week since Prince Philip's death has been spent preparing for his funeral and interment in what is known amongst royal death insiders as Operation fourth bridge. A royal death is all about timing. There are all manner of rules about how the press will inform the public. While the BBC was traditionally the first to know in the past, this time the International Press Association got the news of Philip's passing so his death could be announced worldwide. Flags were lowered, and all on-air news people were supposed to immediately change to black clothes. Oh, it wouldn't be a problem for me, I'm already wearing black. Well, government officials must put on black armbands if they aren't already in black. In 2002, there was a hubbub when a BBC broadcaster wore a red tie to announce the death of the Queen Mother. How vulgar! How positively naff! Once the death is officially announced by the media, a footman dressed in mourning clothes exits Buckingham Palace and pins a death notice to the gates. A nation is now on notice. Mourning, we're in mourning. The timing of a royal's death can be a tricky thing to orchestrate, as death is usually not willing to agree to your schedule. This can be difficult for a palace trying to remain in control at all times, in the past, bulletins came from the palace saying things like, in 1936, before the death of King George V, the king's life is moving peacefully towards its close. So they had already informed the public that this death was happening. As we said, timing is everything. The king's physician later admitted that he injected the king with enough morphine and cocaine to make the death happen faster so it could be announced in the morning edition of the Times paper. Wow, that is my new favorite story. Plans for Prince Philip's funeral are pretty low-key. I mean, they're not low-key, but compared to other royal funerals, they are. This was largely due to COVID restrictions and because he just wanted a more modest funeral. He said no to the military procession to Westminster Abbey, where his body would lie in state for the public before a service at the Abbey or St. Paul's Cathedral. Instead, Philip's body will be laid at rest at Windsor Castle, unavailable to the public. Now, we're filming this right before the funeral, so things could change day of. Violent corgi attack disrupts entire procession, resulting in citywide fire! But given the down to the minutia planning of the royal death insiders, I think we can expect that this is how it's gonna go. On the day of the funeral, the prince's casket will be moved by a special Land Rover Philip himself helped design. Ah yes, the simple, modest, custom Land Rover. Modest really is all comparable, right? The procession will make a short journey to St. George's Chapel with the Royal Navy and Marines lining the procession route, along with the Highlanders, the 4th Battalion Royal Regiment of Scotland, and the Royal Air Force. Members of the royal family will walk behind the Land Rover, and there will be a gun salute by the King's Troop Royal Horse Artillery. Note to self, add horse artillery to funeral vision board. At the time of this recording, the casket was predicted to arrive at 2.53 p.m. What did I say about timing? At St. George's Chapel, where the 30 funeral attendees, mainly royal family, will go into the chapel with Philip. Hi everyone, breaking news. 
We used coffin and casket interchangeably in this video, not because they aren't very different things, they are, but because we weren't sure which one they would use for Prince Philip's burial. Turns out there may be more to this story. Prince Philip was apparently very eco-conscious and wanted an eco-wool green burial coffin which would be wild if that's what he actually has. But there are also sources that say that he and the queen have matching caskets, and it's probably gonna be much more like the heavy lead-lined oak deals that kings, queens, princes have had in the past. Developing story remains to be seen. Pun not intended. Maybe a little intended. At 3 p.m. sharp, the nation will hold a moment of silence. Philip will be interred in the royal vault at St. George's Chapel. However, when Queen Elizabeth dies, his body will join hers in the King George VI Memorial Chapel, where they will spend eternity with the Queen's mother, father, and sister. I hope he likes his in-laws. Does he? I didn't watch The Crown. Queen Elizabeth is 94, almost 95 years old. What happens when she dies? It's not just custom Land Rovers, folks. This is the big show, the main event, the Operation London Bridge. Operation London Bridge has been in place since the 1960s, with several meetings taking place every year to update the details. Once details are changed, the outdated plans are disposed of. It is the secretist of secret clubs, and its members take it very seriously. Quote, everyone around the world is looking to us to do this again perfectly. Mm, have to stop you there on the again perfectly. As an American, I've lived my life believing British royal funerals to be the height of pomp and pageantry, but that wasn't actually always the case. Prior to the death of Queen Victoria, British royal funerals were sometimes dull affairs, but were also sometimes a mess. It seems the more powerful the title, the more off the rails the funeral might go. In 1867, a journalist said, the more democratic we get, the more we shall get to like state and show, which have ever pleased the vulgar. Hmm, shots fired. Some recent issues include. In 1817, the undertakers handling the funeral of Princess Charlotte were drunk and the service was delayed due to fights over seating. In 1827, at the funeral for King George III's son, the Duke of York, the Foreign Secretary George Canning caught rheumatic fever and died. In 1830, not only was the procession of King George IV descended upon by pickpockets, but the crowd was so loud, rowdy, and unruly that the funeral at St. George's Chapel had to be rushed to conclusion. We never saw so motley, so rude, so ill-managed a body of persons, said a Times correspondent. But things started to change with, you guessed it, Queen Victoria, the literal, yes queen, of the death positive movement. The queen was not only fascinated by death, but also had an awareness for the public desire for royal theatrics. Though Victoria died in 1901, she had her funeral planned by 1897 and the contents of her coffin decided by 1875. It was Victoria's funeral that laid the groundwork for the modern royal funeral. Unfortunately, even her funeral wasn't without its hiccups. A harness snapped on one of the horses carting Victoria's coffin up a hill. All the horses panicked, start bucking wildly, and the queen's coffin very nearly gets shot out of the cart to slide down the hill. After Queen Victoria, royal public ceremony became a point of pride. Thus, the extreme planning that comes with funerals we've seen in the 20th and 21st centuries. Which brings us back to Queen Elizabeth. It's predicted that the queen will die after a short illness. How did I know that? Your Highness. If your doctor comes into your chamber bearing cocaine and morphine, you're in danger. As soon as the queen is dead, Charles becomes king. So there will be two things happening at once, handling the death of one royal and the ascension of another. The night of the queen's death, Charles is already scheduled to make his first address as king. Do we, like, uh, British people, do you, do, are you excited about Charles being king? It seems like no, but that's just my perception. Please. Let me know. The people most intimately and immediately involved in the Queen's death will be her private secretary, Prince Charles, and the Duke of Norfolk. 
her secretary will contact the Prime Minister and tell him, London Bridge is down. And the UK and the countries where the Queen will be head of state are notified. This is also when the death notice will be pinned to the gates of Buckingham Palace. The BBC's radio alert transmission system, or RATS, it was RATS, will be activated to notify the public. This system is so rarely used and frankly so old school Cold War era that most who work for the BBC don't even know what it sounds like. The British media will broadcast the death announcements that have been rehearsed numerous times, allowing for multiple variables, often using code names in case they're infiltrated. Sky News and the Independent Television News, or ITN, have been using the code name Mrs. Robinson in their rehearsals. Well, look at you, cuckoo -cuck choo There's even music to mourn by, pre-programmed by radio stations, soothing wordless, so as not to be offensive, instrumental music known as the obit procedure. Said BBC radio producer Chris Price, if you ever hear Haunted Dance Hall, nursery remix of the Sabres of Paradise on daytime radio one, turn on the TV. I'm sure they would like the queen to die at home, you know, control and all, but she could also die in Norfolk or Balmoral in Scotland or overseas. Wherever she dies, the royal undertakers, Leverton and Sons, are ready. The 200-year-old funeral home have what they call a hermetically sealable first call coffin, which is what I think we would call a Ziegler case, to collect the queen, or any royal, that has to be brought home from abroad. But no matter where she dies, the queen's body will end up back at Buckingham Palace in the throne room, with guards standing watch over her body. On D plus one, that's D-Day plus one, so you know, the day after the Queen's death, Westminster Hall will be locked, cleaned, and carpeted. On D plus four, the Queen's body will process from Buckingham Palace to Westminster Hall, where she will lie in state for four days. Extremely important. Corgis may be included in the procession. Even now, it's reported her beloved corgis are providing the queen comfort as she grieves her husband, Philip. She even keeps a corgi graveyard, started by Queen Victoria in 1887 for her colleague, Noble, at her estate in Norfolk, where she's been burying her dog since 1959. The procession will be timed so that Big Ben chimes just as the wheels of her transportation come to stop at Westminster Hall. Four soldiers will stand over her body at all times in 20-minute increments, with the members of the royal family likely stepping in on the third day to stand watch in the vigil of the princes. The wreaths on her casket will be refreshed daily as the public comes by to pay their respects for 23 hours each day. On the morning of D plus nine, the jewels on the queen's casket will be removed and cleaned in preparation for the funeral that day. Big Ben's hammer will be covered in padding, so the chimes are muffled, and church services will be held throughout the country. People will have the day off work and the stock market will be closed. The Queen's casket will be carried the few hundred meters to Westminster Abbey, arriving at the doors at 11 a.m. At this moment, all will cease in the country. No trains, no buses, cars will pull over, silence will envelop the United Kingdom until a single corgi's howl pierces the... No, that's not real. That's just something I'm picturing. The Queen's casket will enter Westminster Abbey, where the Archbishop of Canterbury will hold the service. The media does not show the faces of the mourning royals. When the casket leaves Westminster, it will be placed on a gun carriage that carried Elizabeth's father, her grandfather, and great-grandfather. 138 sailors from the Royal Navy will haul the carriage and the casket the 23 miles to Windsor Castle. Now, hand-pulling the casket is a tradition that started in 1901 when Victoria's horses freaked out and bolted and, the, you know, casket almost flew. Anyway, they realized they couldn't trust them to be perfect. And it must be perfect. When the Queen's body finally reaches Windsor Castle, the royal household will be waiting for her on the grass. Her casket will enter the gates, the cameras will stop rolling, and she will be taken to the royal vault, where Charles will sprinkle a handful of dirt on her casket from a silver bowl. At least, that's how it's been planned.
I know many of you were extremely fascinated by the royal funeral concept, especially those of us who do not live in countries that have royal families. And no, the episode of Keeping Up with the Kardashians, where they go plan their funerals in advance, which was actually an idea stolen from me, that's tea for another time, doesn't count. I'm especially interested in comments from people in the UK. How do you feel about this royal death pageantry? Is it really a point of pride for you? Give me the vibes. This video was made with generous donations from death enthusiasts just like you. When I close my eyes, I see the big sea of the ring light and it's like, Caitlin, Sabres of Paradise, nursery remix. <laughs> we have a lot of troubles. Oh, that's right. This is my second time filming this video. Where's his body? We want to see his body. Night shift corpse watch. That'd be an honor. I'd do, I'd do that. If you need me, anyone to watch your corpse, let me know. Can you imagine them closing the stock market for anything in the United States? I wish I had the planning skills of the royal death squad. Well, look at you, cuckoo cuckoo. Well, look at you, cuckoo cuckoo. Cuckoo cuckoo cuckoo. I can't do it. We'll try it again. One more time.